us to where you first experienced the prairie, the heartland. Well, you know, I uh, do come from the East. I come from New York and Vermont. One of the things I always felt living in New York and in Vermont was claustrophobic. You could never see the sky. One thing I remember out there was one day a local train that went out to on a little branch line out into South Dakota. And I got off the train and I walked out into a field, probably on the section of the road. And all of a sudden, I realized the world was turning in one of the flattest places on earth. There was nothing to hold on to. And I think I realized that this country out here is under the sky completely. And this was an experience that I had absolutely never had before. I never got over Discuss a little bit of your photographic strategies. Hard question. <laughs> it's, as I said, it's the most typical landscape. It's typical to have a to do because it's entirely dependent on light and shadow. I mean, all photographs are. But most here, because you have a flat plane, so the clouds, which are Casting shadows on the landscape, give it the depth. You have these rows, these wind rows of things, crops, which give it, again, a sense of perspective. I find, in the evening, I follow the light, because it's, it's, it's waning, it's disappearing. So you follow the light, and you see more and more and more into the depths of things. I have to confess I don't like the morning. It's an injection, the light, oh, whoa. You know, please go away, too bright. But to me, it's, a, it's the magic of the evening when I would take most of my photographs. Um, many of your books tend to be more about change and, and loss. Um, this book uh, seems to be much more about the celebration. Also, if you could maybe take us through how you move us, the viewer, through your book. Yes, it is a celebration. Yes, I have spent my life photographing things. I have photographed change. I photographed things that are disappearing. There's not much left of the kinds of things that I showed about the photograph. They're almost all gone. But also, at my age, I keep thinking to myself, you know, I celebrate the fact that I'm still alive. And I thought, how do I essentially photograph the joy being alive, and the joy of finding something, I guess I wanted to find something that was intensely beautiful, something that I love. And so the combination of having a shaman, which I always need, combination of photographing something that I love, and saying to myself, yes, we, John Deere and Case, and all these people have changed the character, you know, the prairie isn't the same as it used to be. It's gone, small farms are gone, but the intrinsic sense of land is still there. It's still wide open. And so we are putting together the book. We always have to find a way of seducing the reader, or the, or the person that's putting it. Getting interested. Right. Every book has its own way of, of telling you essentially how it wants to be, how it wants to be. It's amazing how the photographs will tell you how to put them together. And when laying out a book, I will very often take five writing paper, three and a half eleven sheets of paper, and be laying the thing out and realize there's a gap. There's a place here. We don't have the photograph. We don't have anything that's going to fit in that space, so you put a white piece of paper there. Sometimes in the book, that becomes a white piece of paper. All right? In this case, there were lots of them. In other cases, it means, okay, pardon, <coughs> find the picture that goes there, or take the other ones out. And it is, well, it, it, it's not a matter of just throwing the pictures on the floor. It's a matter of organizing them. And it's, it's, a, it's a gamble. The whole thing is a gamble. The whole entire thing is a gamble. 
It's magic. I mean, I, it really is amazing.